فنحن نعيش في حياة تلفها المخاطر في ظروف تجعلنا كسفينة في مهب الريح ويتساقل الألم كل يوم ويزيد الحمل على الإنسان من جديد إحباطات وأحباطات تتربص بأفعالنا عجز وقهر يحرق أحلامنا ويكبل أفعالنا فنقع عاجزين تربطنا القيود وتربط كل همة أو نية حتى لكسرها ولكن هل هذه هي الحقيقة؟ هل نحن فعلا الأموات الأحياء أم أنه ما زال هناك أمر؟ My name is Nick Vujicic and I love traveling around the world, fishing, golfing and swimming. I love living life. I am happy. I am happy. I wasn't ready. I have no arms and no legs, but I'm very thankful that I have my little chicken drumstick here. <laughs> People freak out when they see me for the first time. It's so cool, I was at a water slide um, all by myself. Everyone obviously at the bottom of the slide is looking up and waiting for other people to come down and here I come and they're freaking out. They're like, you know, like this. And I was so tempted to look at myself and go, what happened? Nicholas, he is a young Australian man from the year 1982. كانت ولادته مأساة غير متوقعة ألمت بعائلته حيث غادر والده غرفة الولادة حالما وقعت عيناه على طفله الذي لم يكن لديه أطراف بينما أعرضت والدته عن حبله وإرضاعه حتى الشهر الثالث من عمره إلا أن العائلة عادت من جديد بعد تقبل الصدمة لتحيط طفلها بالحب والرعاية دون أن يعلموا أن طفلهم هذا سيكون مدعاة للفخر ذات يوم عاش نيكولا صراعات عديدة في طفولته وحاول الانتحار في سن الثامنة إلا أن حياته انقلبت بعد تلك المحاولة إلى حياة ملؤها العزيمة والإصرار فأصبح قائد الفريق الرياضي المدرسي وتفوق علميا على أقرانه في سن التاسعة عشر حاز على ثلاث شهادات جامعية في إدارة الأعمال والمحاسبة والاقتصاد وقد اختير في أستراليا فتى العام لعام 2005 نيكولاس اليوم يعيش حياته بمفرده دون أن يحتاج مساعدة الآخرين يكسب رزقه بنفسه وقد أسس خمس جمعيات لمساعدة المعاقين وهو يجب البلاد والمدارس والسجون والمستشفيات عن طريق منظمات عالمية يغرس الأمل والحكمة بكلماته لرفع سوية الإنسان وتنمية الثقة بالذات والقدرات يمارس هواياته وهو يحب الحياة أكثر مني ونشكر There were times where I sort of looked at my life and thinking, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you keep on concentrating on the things that you wish you had or the things that you wish you didn't have. And you sort of forget what you do have. And there's no point, I believe, in my life where I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, because wishing won't help. But 
What I've seen in life are just a couple key principles. And the first thing that I've seen is to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful, man. I tell you, when I was eight years old, I, I sort of summed up my life and thought, I'm never going to get married. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a life of purpose. What kind of a husband am, am I going to be if I can't even hold my wife's hand? It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. Oh boy. Woo! It's freezing, I can't feel my hands. <laughs> I love life. You know, so many people come and say, how come you smile so much? And I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> but it's very simple at the same time. You see, it's very hard to smile sometimes in life. There are things that happen that you don't know and you don't understand and you don't know if you're going to get through it. You know, you go through your storms in life and you don't know how long this storm is going to be. And today I want to share with you some principles that I've learned in my life that you can use in yours. Being patient is beautiful. I, I tell you, it's the hardest thing. But I realize I may not have hands to hold my wife's hand. But when the time comes, I'll be able to hold her heart. I don't need hands to hold her heart. You know, it is scary to know how many girls have eating disorders. It is scary to know how many people are just angry at life because of their situation at home and angry at others. It's scary to know how many people actually feel like they're worth But I have a little chicken drumstick and uh So it's like You like that? That would be really cool if I could get this and get some techno going like here we go. One, two, three, four! But honestly, along the way, you might fall down like this. Ready? <laughs> Hello! So what do you do when you fall down? Get back up. Everybody knows to get back up because if I start walking, I'm not going to get anywhere. But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down. And you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. Do you think you have hope? Because I tell you, I'm down here, face down, and I have no arms, no legs. It should be impossible for me to get back up, but it's not. You see, I will try 100 times to get up, and if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again, and again, and again. But I just want you to know that it's not the end. It matters how you're going to finish. Are you going to finish strong? And you will find that strength to get back up like this.
I challenged God. I said, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I won't probably have peace until you're in my heart, but I will not let you in my heart until you answer me, why? Why did you take my arms and legs? Why didn't you give me what everybody else has? And I said, God, until you answer me that question, I will not serve you. And so I wanted to end it. If God wasn't going to end my pain, I was going to end it myself. So at age eight, I tried to drown myself in a bathtub of four inches of water. I told my mum and dad, I'm just going to relax in the bathtub. Can you put me in the bathtub? And uh, yeah, I turned over a couple times to see if I could do it. I couldn't do it. Um, the thought that stopped me from going through with it was the love for my parents. Because um, I, I love them so much and all they did was love me. And I thought to myself, if I actually went through with this, I pictured my funeral, I pictured my parents, and all I saw was guilt on their shoulders that they couldn't have done more. <laughs> I have a choice to either be angry at God for what I don't have or be thankful for what I do have. And that's when I started seeing that there is no point in being complete on the outside when you're broken on the inside. And I found out that God can heal you without changing a circumstance. And I believe God breathed in me life and faith. This faith came over me. This peace came over me. And I felt like God answered my question. The question was, why? Why did you make me this way? And the answer was, do you trust me? That's the question. And when you say yes to that question, nothing else matters. It's so hard to be strong when people constantly say, you're not good enough. You, you know, go away. You know, we don't want anything to do with you. Nick, you're a nobody. Nick, you can't do this. Nick, you can't do that. Nick, 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 Nick. In life, if you don't know the truth, then you can't be free. Because then you'll believe that the lies are the truth. I am not a man without arms and legs. I'm a, I am a child of God. I am forgiven of my sins. I'm an ambassador of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm nothing but a servant of the Most High God. This is not about Nick. It's not about Nick's capacity and capability to become this conqueror. I am nothing. I'm nothing. I believe if God doesn't give you a miracle, you are a miracle of God for somebody else's salvation. And I thank God that he didn't answer my prayer when I was begging him for arms and legs at age eight. Because guess what? Because I have no arms and no legs, he's using me all around the world. And what would you rather? Would you rather have arms and legs, Nick, here on earth and no arms? No. Whatever his will is. Because I'd rather have no arms and no legs temporarily here on earth to be able to reach someone else. God loves you, that he hasn't forgotten your pain, he hasn't forgotten your family. And maybe while you're watching this interview, you've compared your suffering to my suffering. And that's not where hope is, to know that someone else, in your opinion, is suffering more than you. That's not where hope is. Hope is when you compare your suffering to the infinite, immeasurable love and grace of God. Don't give up on God, because God will not give up.